Hey everyone, I'm Renee Brilhanty with Flying Proof Incorporated, and this video is all about how to read an aerobatic Arresti sequence card. So let's get to it. So step one here with the reading of Arresti diagrams, we're going to talk about the overview, which is in the contest rule book for 2020 from the International Aerobatics Club. And that's the manual I'm on. You can get this from the IAC.org website. On the left here, I have the table of contents, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to chapter 36, which is understanding Arresti notation. On the left screen, we have the 2020 intermediate known sequence, and we'll talk about what this B is and all this other stuff here on this page at uh, another point in our video. And on the right, we have the IAC rule book, chapter 36, understanding Arresti notation. So right here in the about section, it mentions this Arresti aerobatic catalog. There is a catalog that you can buy for it. There's also an electronic copy floating around and it shows every Arresti figure that you can think of. However, it is slightly outdated. So any changes that have been made since the publishing of the book are not properly annotated on that. Uh, catalog. At the same time, there hasn't really been much of a change, so you wouldn't be in the wrong getting that, whether it be the electronic or the physical copy. All right, so basic figure concepts. Figures begin with a dot or a small circle and end with a short cross line. What is it talking about? Well, here's your dot. It starts with figure one. Now, figure one, which is your first figure, also kind of has this circle around the solid circle you see the follow on figures don't. So that shows you this is the beginning of a sequence. The figure itself ends with this up and down short line here. So, all right, figure one, it's gonna be a vertical up, five eighths loop, 45 on the down, pull the level, and then end of figure. You'll see the last figure of a sequence has two dashed lines. Now the fact that this is horizontal, that's just based on the axis that it's on. If it were along here, you would have two vertical lines. Figures always begin and end in level flight, upright or inverted. So you're always gonna end a figure in level flight in one way or another. And we'll explain what this angle is here in a few seconds. So you can see everything is ending in some form of level flight. Now it can be either upright, which we'll talk about annotates here by the solid line, or it can be inverted, which would be that dotted line. So you can see figure seven is ending horizontal, but you're inverted. Next note, most figures are merely a combination of lines in radii, but figures can also include turns or special rotations. So as you saw me explain this, a lot of people call this ice cream cone because it looks like an ice cream cone. If I went to a competition and I was assistant judging and I was telling the judge what the next figure is, I kind of have two options. I can say either an ice cream cone or I can say vertical up, 5 eighths loop, 45 down. You can mention here how it's a combination of lines in radii. So let's talk about the line portion. Within a figure, all lines go horizontal, vertical, 45 degrees. So now it's talking about axes here. If you have anything that runs side to side here, you're dealing with the X axis. Anything that's running at this 30 degree angle, you're dealing with what we call the Y axis. X axis, the aircraft must be flying horizontally. It also must be going in the direction that it's depicted on the sequence card. So figure one, you must start going into the wind and you must end going into the wind. So no matter what, you're traveling judges left to judges right. Now going from figure three, where you have this one and a quarter spin, and then you see this line come out at a 30 degree angle, that's on the Y axis. So the competitor is either gonna fly to the judges or away from the judges. And they choose out of that just because this line here depicts and makes it look like you're going to the judges. It doesn't matter. The competitor can fly in either away or towards on the Y axis. However, when they're done with figure four, they have to be exiting to the judges left. Briefly already discussed this, but we're going to go and mention it again. So all solid lines is a positive G loading. So you're pulling the aircraft and you're getting positive G. Whenever you see these dotted lines, that's going to tell you that you're gonna be negatively loading or your inverted flight. So for example, figure four, it's solid here. So you're gonna be pulling that half a loop. If you saw red dotted lines, then you would be pushing and your canopy would be on the outside of that Humpty. Now spins always have this dash line on the down. And we'll talk about each of the different type of roll and spin combination figures. Here the radii, thing less than 180 is depicted as a hard corner. What that means here is so if you look at figure two, it was 90 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. 
Well, they're less than 180, and it's depicted here as a hard corner. But when you're flying, that's not how it's going to look. It's just going to be a consistent radius. Sure, to make it look good, you'll get as tight as you can in that pole. But it itself doesn't mean you're going to fly a hard corner. You just have to fly the same radius through here. Because it's less than 180 degrees, you're going to see it as such. So on the Humpty here, it is 180 degrees. Looks like loop. Same with the ice cream cone, avalanche, goldfish. Moving on to talk about rules. So looking at these figures in the contest rule book, you're not actually going to see something that looks exactly like this on the actual sequence card. Because on the sequence card, you see how it has arrows with it as well. This depiction comes from Open Arrow, which is an online program that people use to build their own sequences. And we'll have a later on video regarding Open Arrow. In the meantime, really what it wants to talk about is, okay, don't necessarily pay attention to this dotted line. Just look at the added little tick marks with each of these lines. So whenever you see that there's a half tick, so it goes from the line itself out, then it's going to be either a half roll if there's nothing else depicted, or if you see any kind of other depiction, it will be a different kind of roll. It mentions this later on in the rule book, but I'm just going to go ahead and mention it now because I'm here. If you see this one quarter, then instead of a half roll, this is actually going to be a quarter roll. And over here, you see something different. It's called a hesitation roll. So a two of four. Think of the second digit here, so the four. It's a four point roll. You're just going to do two portions of that four point roll. So you're going to roll a quarter, pause, roll the other quarter, and then you're going to end up inverted here. Overall end result, you roll the aircraft a total of a half a roll, but you do it in two quarters, two of four. Now back to the rule book where it has just the full line, that signals a complete roll. So coming over to the sequence card, you're going to see a complete roll in here. Now something on top of that that I want to mention is you have a two, that's going to be a two point roll. Whenever you have a half or less, you're always going to see it in a quarter sense. And your hesitations are always going to have an X, so a something by something. But in this case, when you have a two-point roll, it's shorthand and it just has the two on there. I know, it seems like a lot, but you get used to it. So this is a two-point roll. You're starting off inverted because of the dotted line. You're going to roll a half a roll, which will put you upright, pause, and then you're going to roll the other half of that roll, and you'll end inverted where this dotted line is. If that two was not there, then you would just do one complete roll from inverted to inverted with no pause. Then let's talk about these rolls on the vertical. So something to kind of think about is, how do you know if it's on the up or the down line? Well, there are a few different cues depending on the kind of figure, but overall, it's going to be depicted on are you concave down or concave up? I like to think of it like you are going through this way. So there's a few different ways. Some people think of it like the feathers on an arrow. So the tip of the arrow is here. That's the direction you're going. And then you have your uh, feathers of the arrow. Another thought you could think of if that was like a tape finish line, you're going to fly through it, then it would pull in this way. Or if you're on the down line, it would pull in that way. And you'll even see this on the horizontal because you can see in the direction I'm going, I'm pushing through to here and it's creating the feathers. Next item in chapter 36, there are three types of rolls. So you have aileron rolls, which includes your slow and hesitation, your snap rolls, and your spins. Okay, you can argue here that snaps and spins are not considered rolls, but when you are looking up the Oresti catalog, and you're also putting stuff in open arrow, your flicks or your snap rolls and your spins are all going to be under that roll section. So what do they look like differently? Here's kind of the quick and easy. If you're dealing with a slow roll, which doesn't mean the speed of it at all, it just means that you're continuing along the same flight path. You're not gaining or losing your flight path or angle depending. If you start seeing triangles, you're dealing with either a spin or a flick. So if you're dealing with a right triangle, you're dealing with a spin. This right triangle that goes through and is on both sides of the line, that's one whole rotation. So that's one spin and this half of a right triangle. If nothing here was depicted, it'd be one and a half spin. But because there's that quarter, that means a quarter. So you're going to spin one and a quarter rotations. And that's why you end on the y-axis off of figure three. If you see a isosceles, that is going to be your snap or your flick roll. And that's on the top of this loop. This figure is commonly called the avalanche. Either way, that itself is a snap. 
and you're going to have the same thing with the snap. So because you have this large triangle here that takes up both sides of your line, or in this case your radii, then that is a whole flick. If it was just half, then it would be a half. Another thing I want to inform is, although not on here, and go ahead and let me pull up. The advanced sequence. So in the advanced sequence I want to show a couple things. One, here's your half snaps. That's actually a three-quarter snap because it annotates it here. Right here you have a half snap. Now negative is another thing. If you have a negative spin or snap, which is going to start either in the inverted in the spins case, or you're going to push instead of pull in a snaps case, you're going to have a solid triangle. So right here you have a inverted one turn spin. There are no uh, inverted or negative snaps in here for me to point out. I do apologize for that. All right, I'm going to continue on with the 2020 advanced known sequence as an example here as we continue through chapter 36 of the rule book. Continuing on our discussion on chapter 36 about roles, linked and unlinked roles. If you have multiple continuous rotations, you're going to see like in figure one here that you have the one and a half roll. And those are annotated by this little tick mark that connects it. So what this tells us is that this one and a half roll is going to all be in the same direction. You'll never see this more than 720 degrees in total. Now down here on figure 7, it's going to have a quarter roll followed by a three quarter roll in the opposite direction. And that's notated from having one arrow pointing one way and an another arrow pointing the other way. Now whether you choose to go left or right first doesn't matter as long as you go a quarter in one direction and three quarters in that opposite direction of the roll. Figure numbers. So before we talk about the figure numbers here, I'm going to take a step back and talk about your different sequence cards. So you have an A, B, and a C form. A form is your score sheet. So when you go up and fly, the recorder has this and they're giving you a 0 to 10 scale grade here and they're giving any kind of remarks specific to that figure. So your scorecard has a few different items on it. It's going to tell you your figure number so you can reference. It's going to have an actual depiction of the figure that you see on the sequence cards. And then it goes into your catalog number. So if you open up the Uresti catalog, which I don't have an electronic copy on here to show you guys, it's going to give you your families. So family 7 is talking about this whole lay down 8. And then from there, the added on parts. The 9s, you're dealing with your roll and your roll types. That 2 of 4, half snap, 1.5 roll, and that's your other category numbers. Next to that, it gives you your K. K value is the amount of points that that particular part, whether it be the figure or an added portion of that figure, give you. You add up all the K values and you get your total K and that's what the entire figure one is worth. So figure one is worth 41 points of that 283. I'm not going to sit here and do math for you but you take 41 divided by 283 and that tells you the percentage of how much worth this figure is. So if you zero it you now have 283 minus 41 points. So the idea is, is that the higher the K, the more difficult the figure. Then you have a B form. The B form and the C form are both your sequences. The only difference between the two is your wind direction. The C form is a wind starting from the judge's left and going to the judge's right. And a B form, the wind is going from the judge's right to the judge's left. You can fly in the cockpit using, using either card. But the chief judge for that category is going to choose which direction the winds are coming from. And that will decide whether or not you're going to fly the sequence like a B form or a C form. And what's the difference? Well, you can see here figure one on the C form, you start the judge's right and you go towards their left. And at the end of it, you're going out towards their left. Where on the B form, you start on the judge's left and you head towards their right. And at the end of the figure, you end up to the right of the judge. Now that we laid down those ground rules, when you actually look at the sequence card, how it's drawn is pretty much how you're going to fly it. That's the shape that it should look like when you fly it, with exception to all those different little caveats that I just explained, like the dotted line for a spin is always going to be there. The dotted line otherwise means you're upside down or inverted or you're pushing these rolls, spins, and snaps. So I'm going to go through each of these figures. When you're talking about these figures, you can always use nicknames. Or you can also just explain what each portion of that figure is. And when you're assistant judging and you're calling out these figures to the judge that you're working with, either method is acceptable. However, some judges prefer one way or the other, and they should tell you that when you sit down on the line. 
Overall, the assistant judge, you're there to learn as much as you can, so don't be worried about jumping and give this a try. So figure one, the nickname for this is ice cream cone. Snow cone is another one. Figure one, you'll pull to a vertical up, pull a 5 8 loop, stop at the 45 down, pull a level, and end a figure. Figure two is just a vertical up, and a cap off is what a lot of people call push to a level upright. Figure three is a one and a quarter spin ending on the Y, and they can once again end towards or away from you. Doesn't matter about the depiction here on the sequence card. End of figure. Figure four is going to be a Humpty. That's what you call this whole thing. So it's a pull, a pull, pull Humpty. So pull with a quarter roll on the up, pull half loops down, nothing on the vertical line, exit to the left, end of figure. How you mentioned and you heard me say exit to the left, that's important to mention in, when you're on the judge's line as the assistant judge after a Y. So if they're coming towards you or away from you, the next figure it is courteous to mention if they're going to exit left or exit right so the judge can easily tell if they're exiting the figure in the right direction because if they went in the wrong direction and they start exiting right then you would hard zero this whole figure because you didn't fly it properly. Figure 5, they nicknamed this the 45 hammer. Something that I didn't talk about on here already is this little tick mark here is a hammerhead. It always is going to look like that so it's a hammerhead. So pull to the 45, pull vertical up, hammerhead, vertical down. There is nothing on any of these lines. End of figure. Figure 6, nicknamed the avalanche, loop with a full snap on the top. That snap roll should happen in the middle or the apex of that loop. End of figure. Figure 7 is just a half loop up, nothing else, so you're going to end inverted. Figure 8 is going to be a two point roll, so you're going to roll a half, pause, roll the other half, and you'll end inverted. Figure 9 is a half loop down and a one whole roll, which will end you upright. Figure 10 is just a straight hammer. Figure 11, we call this a goldfish. 45 up, two of four rolls. So you're going to roll a quarter, pause, roll the second quarter, pause. You'll end up inverted, but you're going to pull, which is why this is solid. You'll pull up, 45 up, cap off, and a figure. Figure 12, this we didn't talk about, but whenever you see a turn with a roll, it's called a roller. So they're going to turn 90 degrees, and at the same time that their radius is continuously changing, their bank is also going to continuously change. Because this arrow is to the inside, it's going to be a one turn roll to the inside and you should end up on the Y axis and that can be either away or towards the judges, your choice. And that concludes our video. If you have any questions or comments, please put that down in the comments box below. I want to thank you all for your time and keep on flying, preferably inverted. See ya.